Yvette Terry, and welcome to Professional Development. I am happy to provide this service for the community. This show is here and put in place for you to provide you with tools, information, and career advice to help you take your career to the next level. I would like for you to go to www.divinedesignsite.com and there you will find information, articles, videos to help you to start thinking about the direction in which you would like your career to take. In the meantime, I am very excited to have uh, Shannon O'Brien. She is the founder and a personal advisor of a company that's called Hold You. Hold You is a career and life strategy company that helps people find ideal jobs, balance and purpose in their lives. And Shannon, welcome to the show. I'm very happy that you're here. Thank you so much, Yvette. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Absolutely. So let's dive right into uh, Hold You and, and how you got started. So what inspired you, Shannon, to create this, this particular service? Well, I was working in higher education for about six or seven years. And I, was, I loved my job. I loved my colleagues. I loved what I did. And I, sort of on the side, I was helping friends out with their career search, with their cover letters, with their resumes, much like you do with yeah. your business. Yeah. And I got a lot of fulfillment from that, a lot of fulfillment from helping people try to find alignment between who they are and what they wanted to do for a job. Mm -hmm. And having gone through the process myself of writing cover letters, writing resumes, applying for jobs, I wanted to help people make that process a little bit more manageable. And so there was this one instance in particular that made me think, huh, I think I could start a business out of this. And it was, I was at my job and I received an email from somebody who said, hey, I, I see that you're connected with somebody on LinkedIn who works at this particular company. A friend of mine would like to work there. Can you connect them? Mm -hmm. And I was just about to launch into, because it's a very enjoyable process for me, and I was just about to launch into helping them out, which usually takes, I don't know, the process like four, five, six hours. Who knows how long right. it takes. Right, depending on the particular person's career path and exactly. background. Exactly, and I was about to jump into it with pleasure, and then I just thought, wait, I'm a busy person, I got a lot of going on, so mm -hmm. let me make this a business, let me make this more of a, um, a legitimate process, so that's how it was born. Wow. Yeah. Just by a joy of, of serving people and helping people. Right. So talk about the words whole you. How mm -hmm. did you come up with that particular name for this company? Mm-hmm. So I give a lot of credit to Future Boston Alliance. They are an organization that is trying to make Boston a more a bright, vibrant community. And they have an accelerator program. Mm -hmm. And the accelerator program was to help small businesses get started. And I originally submitted an idea called Whole Citizen. Because mm -hmm. I, I like this idea of being whole, being a person that feels confident, that likes their work, that's healthy, that's helping others. That's what I think of when I think of a whole person. But then I said citizen because I wanted someone to feel like they were a proactive citizen in the community, and in this case, Boston, making it a better place. So I really aligned with Future Boston Alliance and their mission. Mm -hmm. um, but I changed it to whole you because I, didn't, I wanted it to be more personal. I wanted people to engage in this process and realize this is me. This is I need to be a whole person first before I can help others. It's kind of that analogy of, putting on the oxygen mask, you know, in an airplane, putting yours on first before you help others. Right. I so. love that. I love the fact that you're, you're taking in different components and bringing it into uh, a person's entire career. We're pretty much groomed to just get up, get dressed, and go to work mm -hmm. and um, leave our lives at home. But it doesn't work like that in real life. Right. And, and you can't necessarily be pr uh, productive or successful if you leave your values at home and you leave your, your, uh, your, your goals at, at, at home, you have to bring all of that with you and even your entire uh, well-being. Mm -hmm, exactly. So before we move on, I want to remind our uh, audience that this is a live show. You are more than welcome. You are encouraged to call in at 617-708-3280 and ask Shannon some questions, uh, provide some comments, and uh, get some information that's going to help you become a more well-balanced and successful uh, professional. So, Shannon, so we're going to stick with this whole you and this whole concept of encompassing the entire person on, on the job. So when you, you mentioned that you started writing your own career documents, mm -hmm. and that obviously got you your, the job that you had. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot in and of itself. 
Yeah, I right. guess so. So you're a six. I was so, living proof. So you knew you were good because you landed the interview, which is the mm -hmm. first thing that mm -hmm. your resume is supposed to do, mm -hmm. is get you an interview, and then you landed the job. Right. So once, so once you've you've done that repeatedly, you realize, hey, I have something here, and I also love to service other people. Right. I should say there, though, I did not get every job I applied for. You did. Oh, no, of course not. Of course not. I mean, we, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I was surprised, too. No, but, um, you know, you apply for jobs, and sometimes it's just not a fit, right? right? And for you try your best. Another. Yes, for exactly. One for another. one reason or another, yeah. they have a better candidate. You didn't have the specific skill, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And over time, you learn to not take that so personally. Mm -hmm. But, um, yes, I went through that process over and over and over again. And I got the jobs that I feel were right for me. And I learned a lot in the time. And I think that everything happens for a reason. I do believe that. But, yes, to answer your question, going through that process and having different jobs, also different internships, mm -hmm. my resume, my job search documents, if you will, were kind of... Um, a, a pride for me. I always tried to improve them, and um, you know they're a constant evolution even today. So I love that. I'm I'm, I'm getting goosebumps because <laughs> that's what I love to do uh, to help people with their career management and with their planning and making them look beautiful on paper. Right. So, but what you're saying, there's a lot of key words in there that are very important. When you say, "I knew what I wanted to do," mm. and and that plays into. Uh, the entire all the services that you provide at Whole You. Mm -hmm. So there's a wellness component, mm -hmm. there's a career success component, and then there are service goals component. Uh, component. So how does that blend um, all together in terms of how do you help the client go from point A to, to point B in their in their career, mm -hmm. or even identifying what they would like to do in their career? Right. So it comes back to what you were saying about you don't want to leave your goals and values at home when you go to work. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you want to have them blended in, as you said, or integrated. Mm -hmm. So my concept, and this is actually difficult when I was trying to come up with the language of what does my company do? Who do I serve? What do, what do I actually do? Um, so I broke it down of all these things I wanted to focus on because the whole person, that's a lot of different things going on from um, style, the way we wear our hair, the way, we, the way we dress, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we engage with people. There's so many different elements. So how can I explain all that to somebody? But I broke it down into three categories, okay. which, as you said, wellness of mm -hmm. mind and of body, mm -hmm. career, career success is what a lot of people want, right. and then service. So and there's a triangle. A triangle or a circle, like, uh, how, yeah, it basically, way, yeah. All the points touch exactly. together because they're all in co together. Exactly, yeah. and they are inextricably linked. Mm -hmm. So people often come to me and they say, I just want a new job. I hate my job and I want a new one. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> Need a little bit more, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I got path you, path. I'm with you, I right. want it for you as well, but let's start. I, I try to engage people in the process of of starting with wellness, starting with, with wellness of mind, which includes our relationships, how we're perceiving ourselves and others, and how mm -hmm. we're communicating. Because mm -hmm. I think that that is part of wellness. And it does play into how we're doing in our current role, but then also how we're going to interview. If you do get the interview, are you going to appear well? Are you going to communicate in a, in a way that um, is received well by the interviewer? So. Wellness is a key component, wellness of mind, wellness of body. So someone is, is yeah. feeling good, feeling confident, feeling healthy. So we get, I feel like that's a starting point. Then we can work on all that we were talking about with career materials, networking to find jobs, and so on. Mm -hmm. But then that final piece that you referred to, the service piece, mm -hmm. and um, also what I was saying about being a proactive citizen in your community, so getting yourself in order first, but then ultimately to help other people. Mm -hmm. So. I love that. So the, the, the component of wellness, I want to just talk about that just for a little bit because mm -hmm. when you say how you show up is how people are going to receive you. Mm -hmm. What you wear, um, how you coordinate your, your attire, mm -hmm. um, how you present yourself on paper, the way you talk about your experiences. Believe it or not, I've come across people, and you might have as well, um, that would come to a session venting about, I, I, I hate my job, I just want a new job. And we get that as, as career professionals, we get mm -hmm. that. But um, what you try to do is try to remove that, hear them out, mm -hmm. you know, it's not necessarily a venting session, but let them talk mm -hmm. and try to get them to see, let's talk about what you did like at your job yes. and let's talk about your 
your uh, accomplishments mm -hmm. in your in your current employment sure. because the way you present yourself to a, a, a group of people you, you never know if you, when you walk into an interview if it's going to be a committee or mm -hmm. if it's just one person mm -hmm. and that's happened many times uh, to me and other people that I've work with they had no idea that they were going to meet with three or four people that we assume we're going to just meet with the hiring manager one-on-one -on -one or, or the recruiter mm -hmm. and these these folks are there to scrutin scrutinize you they're there to make sure you have your eyes dotted and your T's crossed mm -hmm. and if, if any resentment comes across in the interview forget it mm -hmm. you're done yeah. you've, you've blown the actual the interview mm -hmm. so that wellness piece and taking care of yourself um, body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, going, if you get an interview, first of all, that's huge. Huge. That is huge. Huge. And once you've landed an interview, they they've called you in. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a golden golden opportunity. Right. Has anyone has any of the clients ever uh, ex explained to you about a process they've had where they were surprised at a question or a question was asked and it triggered something for them and. They didn't know how to how to answer it. Yeah, I'm trying to think from my own experience because mm -hmm. I, I wish I was in the room. I wish I was a fly on the right, wall or right. like a coach. It's a learning you know, with opportunity. The, yeah, w with my clients, I wish I was in the room. But Shannon, I think we have a phone call. Oh, Caller, my are you on the line? Do you have a question for Shannon or a comment? Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, I have a question. And okay, go right my, ahead with your question. And my question is: Is Failure a part of success? Absolutely. Very Can I answer question. that? Please take <laughs> I was going to say, Shannon. failure is absolutely an integrated part of success, or at least I know for me and a lot of successful people that I, or that I admire, um, you have to fail. You have to make mistakes. As long as you learn from them, I think it's important when you learn from your mistakes, but it's absolutely integrated. It comes back to something that you were saying, Yvette, as well. Um, People focus on the negative sometimes, you know, and I think that we should focus on both. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. not only realize, okay, I need to improve uh, my data analysis skills or whatever it is that you're trying to work on, but really encourage yourself. So try to balance out those failures with your successes or those weaknesses with your strengths. It's kind of having a view of both of them at one time mm -hmm. so that you can encourage yourself hey, I have these strengths and I know that I can overcome these weaknesses. Absolutely. Um, just to piggyback off of that, caller, I think that um, um, failure uh, gives some meaning to your success in a particular way because you can go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and you can say, okay, what did I do well? You know, we always want to start off positive. What did I do well and what can I improve upon? I've come across people, and even myself, I didn't land every job that I pursued <laughs> no? either, Shannon, believe it or not. But I've actually, when I, when I apply for a job, I, I, I got the interview, and the interview went well, but they didn't offer me the position. I would take it upon myself to write the hiring manager an email and say, thank you for the opportunity to meet with, with you. Mm -hmm. I'm really, um, I was interested in, in the job a, a great deal. Can you give me some tips on what I could do better in my next interview? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, 90% of the time, people will respond positive t positively to that because they realize you are trying to move forward mm -hmm. and they take it as, uh, you're, they're taking you very seriously as a professional. Mm -hmm. um, so failure, I think, gives you an opportunity to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and say, what can I do better? And it just allows you to, to be better. Mm -hmm. So failure is a part of success, mm -hmm. definitely. And, and I don't think that we should be afraid to share our failures because we, we all have them. You know, mm -hmm. and if you're trying, oh, no, I never make any mistakes. Right, That's I'm, not true. I'm perfect. Yeah, right. so they might even ask you in an interview, what are the failures that you've made? You know, ah, so. Very good. They ask or what are some mistakes and what did yes. you learn from them? And of course, they're like, no, 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 I don't make any mistakes <laughs> ever. And I, I won't with you either. But, you, you know, a sense of honesty yeah. and ownership is important to. Yes. Uh, thank you, Carla, for have. your, for your yeah, question. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so. Uh, that's what I say. This wellness piece is so huge mm -hmm. when you talk about the the whole person. Definitely. And so, so there's three components in it in under that umbrella of the wellness, career success, and service goals. Mm -hmm. The advising, the educational programs, mm -hmm. and then the media. Mm -hmm. So the advising has more to do with bringing the folk, the person in, asking them 
let's talk about your career goals. Mm -hmm. What have you done and what mm -hmm. would you like to do? Is that the, the advising pretty much in a nutshell? Yes, one-on-one -on -one advising can be just a one-hour session every once in a while, almost like a, you know, a doctor's visit. I'm not a licensed therapist, but <laughs> you know, um, similar to that, you go once a year and it's kind of a, a check-in or a tune-up. Um, other more extended programs are like five sessions for mm -hmm. job seekers because you meet with them, like you said, you find out what their mission is and what they're trying to bring into their life. You look at their materials, talk about body language and posture, and then eventually do high-level networking to try to you know, fit them with people mm -hmm. that they, um, industries, companies that they might be interested in. That's great. I want to hear more about the, the networking piece. How do, you, how do you get your client in a room with people that are within their same industry mm -hmm. and how do you prepare them to be able to give a card I hope they I'm, I, I'm assuming they have their own cards I encourage we always cards. advocate have your <laughs> own card you know you can go to Microsoft Word and just put mm -hmm. your name your title and what you would like to do and your three top skills your contact information you have a business card mm -hmm. and how do you prepare them for that so talk a little bit about your educational programs at whole you what does that package look like sure so there's two different programs you might be referring to one is a workshop that I conduct mm -hmm. at the Boston Center for Adult Education and it's mm -hmm. called developing the whole you and it's a three-hour workshop and we talk about the wellness the career the service we'd go through an assessment and walk through that and just conducted a workshop a couple weeks ago and got such a great amount of feedback. And the best part about it for me was that the participants were encouraging other, you know, each other. And after the workshop, they were getting each other's numbers and wanted to stay in touch because they saw that they had a lot in common. And so that, that really warmed my heart. And that's actually what I would like to create more of is like connecting my clients so that they can meet with each other and, and I don't actually need to be there. So um, that's an educational program I do. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to the one-on-ones, the five hours for career uh, seekers, I have a one-month package where I'm um, dealing with clients in a more intensive way. So it's meeting twice a week and doing homework assignments, exchanging emails. And so it's more of like you know, the holistic approach. It's not just your job. It's really taking everything into account. Right, the wellness piece. Also well. the wellness piece, yes. also, also oh. the service piece. I, I deal with people sometimes in, mostly people in, in later life, 50s, 60s, 70s, who are trying to say, what is my life about? What is my legacy going to be? And, you know, so I try to adapt and meet people where they are because mm -hmm. some people want a job, some people want to talk about legacy, some people want to talk about wellness, and some people are very open to know about the integration of all three. Mm -hmm. So I try to meet people where they're at. I think that's wonderful. And then what about the media piece? How does, what is that? The media piece, so I, in, in school, I studied educational media. And funny enough, I wanted to be a humanitarian journalist. And I thought I was going to be reporting live from Mogadishu and telling everybody <laughs> about what's going on you know, in, in foreign countries. That's because cool. that's originally what I wanted to do. But yeah. getting into that profession, I realized that it was very, there was a lot of negativity. And the media can sometimes scare people and what I wanted to do um, is create media that's going to inspire people, encourage them, educate them, but ultimately give them tools and resources, much like you do on your website, like providing uh, content that, will, um, that they'll be able to integrate in order to improve and evolve. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've, I've done. I've created a YouTube channel and content called Whole U TV. Yes. where I interview people on topics like meditation and fitness and style and all kinds of things. So, And I think that's wonderful that you, you've you taken ownership. You're such an example to your clients of what um, a whole you person would look like. So I'm hoping, I'm assuming that they're, they're following that lead and that they're uh, taking advantage of social media that their presence on social media has a huge impact mm -hmm. on whether or not you be called in for an, an, an interview. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask our um, control room if they could get that video uh, YouTube clip ready and let me know when it is ready and uh, we'll be able to show it for this probably like a two minute uh, piece. Great. And once they get that up and rolling, we'll show it to our voting audience. And once again, I want to remind you guys that we are live and I am with Shannon O'Brien. She is the founder of a company called Whole You. It's a career and life strategy company that helps people find the ideal job, 
uh, balance and purpose in their life. So I'm encouraging you to call in today at 617-708-3280. We are ready for that clip and uh, let's watch it. Insights on living a balanced, purposeful life. Welcome to Whole You TV. I'm Shannon O'Brien. In this segment, we'll be talking about style. More specifically, the five essential items that every woman should have in their closet. I'm joined by expert stylist, Miss Rachel Mina. Rachel, thanks so much for being on Whole You TV. Thank you for having me, Shannon. I'm happy to be here. Before we jump into the five essential items, I'd like to talk about your background and how you got interested in fashion. Well, I. I've always loved fashion, I mean, even since I was a little girl. I always would collect Vogue and jump into my mom's closet and try things on. But recently, I got into the industry professionally in Australia, actually. I was working there for the past three years in fashion, doing some styling and buying and some visual merchandising. I know you had said that there's a list of 10 essential items. Yeah. But for this segment, we're going to be focusing on five. What are those five essential items we should all have? Well, it was hard to narrow it down to five, but the top five, I think, for every woman are a blazer, a white blouse, a classic pump, a little black dress, and a black pant. So okay. I think those are the top five. Okay. All right. I think I may have all those items. I have to admit that when I go into my closet, it's a closet full of nothing to wear. <laughs> I open it up and I'm like, oh, I like that cardigan and that t-shirt yeah. and I wear the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind jumping into my closet and yeah. seeing if I have those items. I'd love to. Okay, so we're going to go over to my closet and see if I have these five essential items. Let's go. Out of our five essentials, I found four that are okay. great. These black pants. Mm -hmm are very versatile as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can obviously wear them professionally, but it's just a good thing to have in your closet. You can dress it up with heels or something, with mm -hmm. a nice silk blouse on the weekend. The blazer. That was awesome. That was Shannon O'Brien with one of her clients and uh, going over a wardrobe assessment. Um, so Shannon, talk a little bit about that clip we just viewed. Yeah, thanks so much for showing it. So the stylist, Rachel Mina, is a very talented, very articulate young woman. And I just thought it would be great to highlight her and promote her skills. Mm -hmm. And so we just came up with this, this topic, um, you know, five essential items for females. But um, I wanted to also say that in future, I'll also make some... Um, programming for men as well because Whole U is definitely about men and women right. but in this particular case we featured um, the five essentials for a woman's closet yes and I thought it'd be funny to go into my own closet because literally I don't dress like this every day if right. I don't have to <laughs> I'm wearing some sweatpants and sweat you know right. um, so I did want to get just the basics you know that that people could wear and and sort of you know the go-to's um, in a professional setting so mm -hmm. that um, launched this idea really practicing this episode with Rachel um, now I've, I've queued up a bunch of different um, segments on a bunch of different topics and we'll be circulating that I'll be launching it in, in later this month that's awesome yeah wonderful so appearance is huge when we show up for an interview when we show up, up to a networking event um, I know that uh, different companies depending on their culture have different dress codes mm -hmm. nonprofits tend to be a little bit more business casual and the for profits the corporate world tend to be more you know white shirts and ties mm -hmm. and blazers and jackets and things of that nature um, how do your clients take to that that uh, assessment in terms of do they are they prepared to dress according to the job that they're going into yeah that's a great question um, I'll take an example of a client that I had uh, a male who I actually so Oftentimes how I work, if I don't have the skills or expertise, I want to send them to an expert. So I will mention Jeff Lehans is mm -hmm. this fantastic, very talented uh, stylist for men. Mm -hmm. And I sent a client to him because I trusted him. Uh, and Jeff said to him, so this client was kind of considers himself a, a Rastafarian, you know, like likes, um, you know, used to have dreads. kind of like, colors. Yeah, just yeah. like more relaxed, doesn't really want to be buttoned up. Well, he interviewed and got a job at sort of a stuffy, you know, company. Corporate. And so how do you um, marry those two, you know, your style and what you want to wear to this, you know, office environment that might have a culture that's completely different? So Jeff worked with him and said, you know what, you don't need to, 
you know, don't think of it as like giving up your soul, you know, selling your soul. Try to integrate it. So he worked with Jeff to find ways to integrate his own style. Mm -hmm. um, even if it was a pendant kind of tucked in, you know, that no one would see, but just like maintaining your identity, mm -hmm. but um, also trying to fit in as much as possible, but not joining the herd. You right. know, you don't want to feel uncomfortable. And maybe if the, you know, if this um, company has a, a culture or a, a dress code that you're not uh, feeling comfortable with, it might not be a fit, actually. Exactly. So That's a good point, um, because I know that's huge for, for most of us, is that we don't want to lose our identity <clears throat> when mm -hmm. we, excuse me, walk into a, uh, an office or any kind of, of job and feel like I have to leave my earrings at home, or I can't wear a particular cross, or right. my hair color is too bright, right. or even um, with the younger adults um, in the, in the, in the African-American community, a lot of them want to wear cornrows, mm -hmm. and a lot of them want to wear uh, dreadlocks, mm -hmm. and they feel pressure. They don't know how to um, present themselves without, uh, and not sacrifice who, who they are. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that has to be some... Not struggle, well, but... Yeah, and I think more and more companies are um, identifying that people do want to maintain... That's the way that they express themselves. So one company that comes to mind, a Boston-based company, Karma Loop, started by Greg Selka, who Karma also... Loop? Karma Loop? Karma okay. Loop. It's an online clothing distributor. Okay. I think it's... And it's, um, you know, urban kind of streetwear. Like, um, so Greg Selka started this company and I was walking by it the other day, their office is on Boylston mm -hmm. and I was walking by it and some people, you know, were outside dreads, like cool clothes, like having a good time and I knew that they worked for Karma Loop because they looked you really like they could just like look really creative and yeah. like looked really like comfortable in their own skin and their own clothes that they're wearing. And I think like a company like Karma Loop encourages that. Whereas I don't know about State Street or Fidelity, you might want to be fitting in with the the suit. So I think it's identifying companies that's going to embrace who you are if it's really important to you. Absolutely, and so. that goes back to what you were saying earlier when you said, I knew what kind of job I was looking for. It's important to do the research mm -hmm. on the company that you're interested in, in working in and reading their mission statement and looking at the pictures on the website because that's going to tell you what kind of um, environment they're going to be expecting you to assimilate in. Right, and then once you get the interview, you could just Poke your head around in and some say, of the offices oh, okay. and yeah, see yeah. if you could hang out with these people. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So you're going to offer this component to men as well, mm -hmm. and suits, ties, and even business casual, I'm, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And you'll be producing another video as well? Right. I would love to get Jeff, Jeff Lahan, so we're still in communication. Oh. He does work with uh, some of my clients. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talking about men's style is definitely on the, um, on the agenda. But I would love to get any ideas from you. Um, you know, if you want to email me or uh, get in touch with me through Yvette, if you want to suggest any topics that you would like to see about the whole person, we're always looking for new topics mm -hmm. and new people to interview. So. And I just want to remind our audience once again that I am with Shannon O'Brien. She's a founder and a personal career advisor for Whole You. This is a live show. We are encouraging you to call in with your questions, with your comments. The number is 708. Uh, excuse me, 617-708-3280. And um, this is your opportunity to ask questions about um, any careers that you may be thinking about pursuing, any questions you have about interviewing, your resume, uh, your entire wellness as, as a person in terms of um, what kind of companies you might want to go into that, that supports wellness. And actually, that's kind of big these days is this eat well, live well kind of thing. And a lot of companies are incorporating a more holistic approach for their employees. Thankfully. They're in incorporating gyms and yep. the, and the first floor level of their buildings yep. or there's a gym nearby somewhere, yep. which is really awesome. Or even um, tables that are sort of like, you know, you're working at a station and they're, they have like a um, treadmill. I've seen, I've seen those. I've I want seen, one of those. Can, but can you, can you do that all day, every day? Well, I, I, think, I think movement is important, and actually the way that we sit is really important. Yeah. I sit a lot, actually, so yeah. I do, I'm, I work with a body healer, a chiropractor, and work on different, Mallory Tinsley, I'll give a pl plug Please. for her, she's fantastic. Um, but working on different exercises, and she's given me a new one that every single hour yeah. I should do some yeah, sort while of you're twist in your and chair. movement. No, to, to actually to get, get up, up and because do it. You're so, my psoas gets so tight, right. and so... Yeah, um, I, definitely I, being aware of, of your how posture. You're sitting. Exactly. Speaking of posture, <laughs> I want to uh, go to a quick PSA, and we'll be right back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Great.
Divine Design Professional Resume Writing and Career Center. This is your one stop for your marketing tools. Keep in mind that it is your time to shine and this is your best time to put your best foot forward. Divine Design specializes in quality resumes, cover letters, career bios, and LinkedIn profiles. These are your essential marketing tools. A quality resume is employer focused and shows the strategic impact of your accomplishments. Target your resume to a position and lead with your personal branding statement. This is essential to grabbing the employer's attention with your uniqueness. A quality resume looks just like this from Divine Design. It has a branding statement and accomplishments. A quality cover letter influences your reader by generating interest, excitement, and action. Your cover letter should reveal how your skills and experience will add value, be relatable, and offer solutions. Here's a quality example of what a cover letter would look like. Also in your career package should be a career biography. A career biography should be included in every marketing toolkit. A career bio tells your story and captures the essence of your experience. It should reflect your purpose, vision, personality, and much more. Here's a sample of what a quality career bio would look like. If you have access to the internet, you should have a LinkedIn profile. You want to be connected and network with over 200 million people in over 200 countries. Here's a sample of what a quality LinkedIn profile would look like. Get your quality resumes, cover letters, career bios, and LinkedIn profiles today. Divine Design can help you with a professional portfolio for all of your career documents. Here's a sample of what that would look like. And always keep in mind, you create your own opportunities. Call Divine Design today at 857-261-1178. You can reach us on the web at www.divinedesignsite.com. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Yvette Terry. I am your host on today's show, Professional Development. I am here with Shannon O'Brien. She is the founder and a personal career assessment advisor for the company that she created called Whole You. And we were talking about a variety of things here on the show in terms of career development, attire, um, how to have a balanced life, wellness, and we're going to recap on all, on all of that. But before we do, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship, women in business. Mm. So I know for me personally, it's hard. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have a full, I, I tell people I have, I have four jobs. <laughs> so I have my full-time job at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. I have my business of uh, divine design. Mm -hmm. I have this show that I produce and that I host. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a master's student at UMass Boston wow. for my master's degree, which I'm almost done with. Four Yay. classes away. Yay. Yay. Party. So, um, you know, trying to uh, work at moving something forward that you know that you're passionate about. It's mm -hmm. a service that you mm -hmm. want to provide. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the, the, the team to help you do things. Like <laughs> something as simple as uh, uh, sending me some ideas about what kind of brochures could we use for the business. Mm -hmm. So everything's done by you, by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're a one woman show. Mm -hmm. How did you move forward? How, how, how do you do it? Do you right. have a staff? And if you do, how did you go about getting a staff? Right. And, and, do you sleep like four hours a night? Like, how do you do it? <laughs> Sometimes I sleep four hours a night or not at all. I'm going to admit right. that. Right. I know. I um, get it. But definitely, I mean, I should be taking notes from you oh. with the four jobs. And you do such, <laughs> I must take this opportunity to say you do such a good job with Thank all of you. those things. Thank and you, um, I do look forward to celebrating your graduation Thank as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, but to, to, you know, step back in terms of like when I started it, it's really daunting. And it's very scary because you're like, who am I to start my own thing? Well, you know, I, I work for the man and that's what I do. Well, you know, you get into that mentality. We were groomed that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So to, 
you know, start something is a little bit scary and risky, but then it's kind of like momentum. And when you set your mind to something, this is what I believe is that the universe conspires to make mm. it successful if you really believe in it. Mm -hmm. And it's, if you're not in it for the money, you're really in it. It's aligned with your strengths and your skills and your passions. It's like magic. Things just orchestrate and come together. Now, there's a lot of hard work with that magic. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, things are becoming, I would say, a little bit easier for entrepreneurs these days. Even, you know, a, a website. I design my own website. You know, Which look, looks awesome. Thank it's you. Whole, what is the website? Holeyou.info. Okay. And so, I, d I mean, it didn't look like that two years ago. Right. It was like a joke. I would show it to people like, well, that's, uh, like that's nice. really that's nice. nice. That's some flipping right. animations right. and stuff. That's but, cute. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's an evolution. Of Everything course. is an evolution. Absolutely. And so, you know, I've, um, anyway, back to the point about there are a lot of tools for entrepreneurs. Um, so, a Wix.com mm -hmm. is the tool that I use to design my own website. W I X. W I X. Yep. Um, another tool for marketing, for digital marketing, is Mailchimp. I love mm -hmm. their, um, in a, you know, the way that they're it's designed. The user, user friendly, it's so user friendly, yeah. clean. Um, I recently sent out a campaign, very professional. Yeah. You can track who opened and who unsubscribed. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> guys, mailing. I hope they're taking yeah. notes. Yeah, and so, like I said, those tools help. Um, my original plan was to have, I think when entrepreneurs start a business, like, I'm going to have 100 employees and it's going to be this big success and I'm going to be the next uh, Donald Trump or, you know, Sheryl Sandberg <laughs> or whatever, really successful. But mm -hmm. you got to start at mm -hmm. the ground, ground level. Mm -hmm. And I actually recently did hire an intern who um, I met at BNN. Thank you, BNN. Yay. Um, she was an the intern The best here. interns on the planet. Yes, best <laughs> interns. Her name is Francia Romero, and she serves as an associate producer to help me um, wow. launch the television show. So the uh, meditation episode that's going to come out was um, filmed and edited by Francia Romero. So thank you. So she that's was the awesome. first intern that I work with, mm -hmm. and that made me, I had to get, so for about two years, I was working solely on my own. I did have help from friends. My friend Michael, my friend Stephanie helped me with, you know, logo design and this and that. You really, it's kind of, everyone knows that you're like, oh, I'm running this business, you know, and they're mm -hmm. like, oh gosh, I've heard so much about your right. business. <laughs> but they help you out. And yeah. so that's your team. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, so I definitely have relied on other people, other friends, family members have been so helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but I did hire a, an intern and I hope to, to hire more. I feel very grateful to have the support. Absolutely. I mean, that's a huge help. I mean, I'm uh, working, uh, my, my sister, uh, Tammy, if you're watching, <laughs> Today's a shout out yeah, show. Yeah, and my niece, Bianca. Hi, Bianca. Uh, who's 23 years old, oh, so nice. she's into the social media. Oh, she's great. like yeah, she, could, she could do Candy Crush with her eyes closed. <laughs> so I'm I'm using my family as a base to say, yeah. Tammy, I need you to send me ideas of what kind of articles we can write. And, great. And just send me a draft. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be grammatically correct. I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. But just send me some ideas. Exactly. So that way, when I'm doing my other three jobs, and I'll come back to do this job, yeah. I'll have something that I can start with, as opposed to doing it from scratch exactly. it's so much and with my niece Bianca being 23 years old um, you know do a Facebook page right. you know I, I'll you give the folks the jobs who have the talent to do and the passion exactly to do to do those exactly. jobs. and I'm sure it's not like um, you know cheap labor or using people it's like you're <laughs> engaging them you, you want that you're really great at this I believe that you're great at this I would love to leverage absolutely. your skills absolutely so. and that's what it takes to be a, a great leader such, such as yourself so um, what advice would you give to someone who's watching a young woman a young man mm -hmm. um, or someone who's even seasoned in their life who would like to start their own business what advice would you share with them yeah, man or woman, uh, young or old, if you have a passion that you don't feel is being fulfilled in your day job, I would say start small, but stay committed mm -hmm. and know that there's this evolutionary process. You are not going to be, I guarantee you that you're not going to be Sheryl Sandberg or, you know, Donald Trump overnight or whoever your, you know, um, mentor is. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just start small, stay committed engage your family and friends as we were talking about yes and um, 
That, that's the main thing. And, and be open. Be open yeah. to the, the universe conspiring to help you out. Absolutely. So um, most, most of us know who Donald Trump is. You know, you're fired, the hair, you know, the whole bang thing. <laughs> but uh, Sheryl Sandberg, Cheryl I know who Sandberg. she is. Sheryl Sandberg, I, I realize I was, bringing, so yeah, I was bringing her up, you know, over and over again. And I bring her up because she wrote a, a book called Lean In. Lean In, yeah. And so I brought that up because we're talking about women in business, too. Yes. But her, uh, so Sheryl Sandberg is um, a big executive at Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so she wrote this book to try to encourage women to really not stand on the sidelines and let other people do all, you know, all the work and get all the credit. And she gives a lot of anecdotes and tells a lot of stories about how she um, worked really hard and, and leans into her job. Even if she has a family and she's a mother, she has kids, mm -hmm. she, she admits that she has help, financial support to get you know, babysitters and so forth. But just this concept to empower uh, women to uh, commit to their jobs in a different way. Right. So um, I do recommend, and there's a whole online community as well that you can sign up for. The Lean there? In community and a oh, Facebook yeah. page as well. But Sheryl Sandberg mm -hmm. is kind of this, um, at least in the past year since her book has come out, mm -hmm. um, a representative of women in business. So that's why I mention her. Absolutely. And, um, and I actually read her book, Lean In, and mm -hmm. there's a piece in the book where she talks about showing up, having a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And so it, it can be intimidating being a woman and you show up in a conference room and there's 12 men, mm -hmm. 14 men mm -hmm. around the table and you're the only woman. Mm -hmm. And she talks about having something to say when you're at the table. Even if it's one thing within that 60 minutes, have something to say right. to, um, to uh, share in the conversation right. because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for ideas yeah. and they're looking to that person as, as a leader as well. And I think she refers to this as well, but the good news is that people do want to hire women. They know that having a diverse, diversity of all kinds, including women, um, enhances, only enhances teams. Mm -hmm. So that's good news. It is good news. Have you noticed across the country, across the world, there are many women in positions of uh, business and leadership and power? Like there's this shift, there's a, there's a change. Uh, um, Hillary Clinton, we, this is 2018, was it 16? Oh, that she ran? That, that, that she's she looking again? To, to run again? You know, that, so there's this whole thing about women um, mm -hmm. in power. Women are there's a shift in, in the in the culture mm -hmm. in terms of um, women having a seat at mm -hmm. the table. Mm -hmm. And so, what do you think about about all of that? Women taking ownership yeah. of their careers and I think it's so I think it's so important. And whatever career you decide, it doesn't mean that you need to be the CEO. You can be the CEO of your family and a great mother. Whatever role that you choose, just choose it intentionally. Mm -hmm do 100% and do it well if that's what you're passionate about. And if you're not passionate about this role, find something else that will enhance um, your life and make you feel fulfilled. And I think for each of us, we might not have had the role models. You know, our mother or our grandmother might not have been in a position that we want to be in. For example, my mom is, is a nurse and she was on her feet all the time, worked the night shift, worked so, so hard. Um, that wasn't a, um, a job that I wanted to go into. I admire her. I'm so proud of her. It's a respectful career, of and course. we need people like your of mom. Of course, of course. And so for me, but it was difficult for me because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a nurse. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of trying to be like my dad. He was a businessman, so I tried to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. But, you know, <laughs> how do you be a businesswoman? So right. I actually, when I was 19, I did, um, actually I was 17. I was a senior in um, high school. I did my first internship. And I did it at the Young Entrepreneurs Network. And my first mentor was named Jennifer Cashel, And mm -hmm. she was 23 at the time. Mm -hmm. But she was starting her own business. And she was a really great positive role model. So I had somebody who was a little bit more my age, not a family member, who was this inspiring businesswoman. And um, I went a number of years. So she was my first mentor. And then I went a number of years you know, looking for another mentor. Um, and recently, I, about a year ago, I came across an online digital mentor, so she does videos as well, and her name is Marie Forleo, mm -hmm. and she talks about uh, career and life coaching as well, and um, she's another mentor, so I suggest for people to yes. reach out 
to either if it's your family member or a friend or someone that you're aware of and say, I need a mentor. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. it's really important. That's essential um, in essential. life, not just essential. in business. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to remind everyone again, this is the live call. Uh, the number should be on the screen. It's 617-708-3280. It's an opportunity for you to ask some questions about um, a resume, a cover letter, an interviewing, business attire, how to get a mentor, how, how do you approach someone mm -hmm. um, who you don't know, you just work with them kind of remotely, and you want you admire them, and how do you approach someone and to say, hey, I'm looking for a mentor, or does the mentor approach the mentee? Mm -hmm. How, you know, it can go either way, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so who, who was your greatest influence, aside from your mom? And, um, and your dad, like who in, in business, who in... Well, yeah, I think, so my mom and my dad were certainly huge influences, worked so hard together um, to, and, and showed me the value of hard work mm -hmm. and not giving up. And um, I think other than that, back to the, the previous caller and their question about failures, yeah. I think influential people in my life have been the bad bosses <laughs> People, you know what I mean? Like I've They're learned actually more good from them. examples. They are I great don't want to be like you. No, nope, I don't. I don't. And I and You're I and I learn leader. how I learn the opposite of that, and how I want to treat people, and yeah. the kind of work environment that I do want to have and uphold and be a part of. Yeah. So even with my clients, I encourage them to write down a list of the work environment that you that you are in or you don't like. And really like feel that. What does it feel like? And then try to create the opposite. Try even if you have to just imagine it and you've never been in it, but just imagining it and creating it mm -hmm. out, out of nothing and really orienting your vision towards that, towards mm -hmm. finding something positive. So, you know, my mom and dad were influences. Um, my dad is a, an incredible um, businessman. He worked. I think his first job was being a construction worker, lifeguard. Um, you know, worked in this awful environment oh, for seven or yeah. eight years, and then eventually worked him his way up. He really wanted to be a, a, a senior level executive, and he did achieve that. And so, uh, he is a huge, a huge business mentor for me. I think that's me. awesome. Um, yeah. So, speaking of, of clients and, and getting helping them getting into the work environment, I want to read a client testimony uh, from someone that has worked with you in Whole great, great. And this is from a person in uh, New York, and his first name is David. And David wrote to Shannon and the company. It was complete magic meeting Shannon. She has such an incredible impact on my professional development and connected me to amazing people who inspired, who are inspired by the same things I'm passionate about. So that's that networking piece. Mm. I continue to seek her advice as I further develop those professional relationships in pursuit of my dreams doing what I love. I look forward to keeping the magic going. Mm. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I think that's beautiful and as what well. And I, what I love about what you're doing for the community, for the world, is that you're very strategic in your approach. So folks can expect to come, to walk through the door and not just walk out with the physical papers mm -hmm. and, okay, here's some interview tips and here's how you, uh, here's what you should do in the first uh, 90 days of a job mm -hmm. there you you encompass everything in terms of y you encourage them to eat right to exercise to take care of themselves and to well you have to assimilate to some point but you don't have to lose who you are because mm -hmm. you're working under someone else's roof okay. and I also want to uh, say that leadership start, starts from where you are mm -hmm. leadership um, is all around us there's good leadership there's bad leadership but um, one way we can learn in terms of how we, what kind of leader we want to be, is observing bad leadership or leadership that you would not want to emulate. Right. So this, the, lead, the seat of leadership starts from where you are. Everyone has some kind of leadership capacity, mm -hmm. and that's what you should tap into um, as I well. Love that. Yeah, I think that testimony says a lot about what you offer and what you do. And I know we have a few minutes left. I want to talk about this networking uh, component that you have for, for your business. How mm -hmm. do you set that up? How do you mm -hmm. um, help people meet other folks who mm -hmm. are like-minded? Mm -hmm. Well, um, referring back to this gentleman, David, he was actually from New York, but I met him in Boston, actually walking down the hallway at MIT. And mm -hmm. he was kind of new to the city. Some of my clients 
are new. They might be here for, a, um, you know, they're a student, they're here for school, or they're here for a new job. Mm -hmm. And I've been in Boston for 20 years. I did grow up in Europe, but mm -hmm. I moved, I've been here for 20 years, and I kind of know a lot of different networks. Mm -hmm. So International, apparently. International, <laughs> women of mystery. I think that is so awesome. Yeah, well, um, but, but I think that that plays into it, too. I don't just say that, um, you know, um, braggingly or something, absolutely, but I, I, I did have this exposure. I feel so grateful. I grew up in Geneva, Switzerland. Okay. primarily for almost nine years. Uh -huh. My classmates were from Nigeria, Sweden, Lebanon, you name it. And I think it was sort of meeting new people and not being scared to talk to other people and knowing what our similarities were, obviously recognizing our differences and respecting that, but also saying, wow, we're all the same and like uh, being open to approaching anyone and mm -hmm. saying, you know, there can be an exchange of, of helping each other out. And so I try to instill that with the clients that I work with. Mm -hmm. And this magic that David referred to, it is, as I referred to earlier, kind of the universe stepping in to conspire yeah. to you know, help me connect. So one example is this woman who is, um, if we have time, yeah, yeah, we do. We okay. have a couple of minutes. For a little yeah. story, um, <laughs> this, uh, this client of mine uh, had just finished a PhD in England, and she studied English literature. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, that's amazing. She wanted to inspire young children through books and through literature. Um, and she had lived in England, and so I kind of put it, literature, England, wow, I just met the founder of an organization called the Harry Potter Alliance. Wow. And I just met him last weekend at a conference, and let me just see if he's hiring. And so it was literally, I just met him and I'm talking to her and she mentions this, reach out to him. And he said, you know what, we've never hired anyone because we're a nonprofit. I'm just putting out two or three job descriptions. Wow. She ended up being really interested in one of them. I made that connection and she ended up working there for a year. And you know, it was just a perfect fit for her at the time. So it's, I don't take credit for it sometimes. It's sort of like so obvious to me what connections to make. Sometimes it's harder with other people and you need to work a little. Um, that was the fastest connection mm -hmm. that I ever made, mm -hmm. I would I have to say. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes it takes more time. But I think eventually, once you figure out what someone's mission is, um, the right people come into place. So it's important to know what people are looking for. So you're providing a service, but the clients are in turn providing a service as well. Yeah. So if I'm looking to work at um, J.P. Ch Morgan Chase, mm -hmm. I need to know what they're looking for in terms of their expectations of the employees. Mm -hmm. It's not just, I want to get in and get a job and get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You have to do some, some research. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Yep. And then, and then I always say to uh, clients, help people to help you. And this is something that my father helped me with when I um, moved back to the States and I was looking for a job and he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, educational media. And he goes, okay, well, media is newspaper, radio, this, that, the other. Like, what exactly is it? So I had to get, you know, break it down. Mm -hmm. What industry, what company, That's what right. kind of people? Be so very help people exact. to help you. Exactly. Right. So we have a couple of minutes left. I, would, I have to give you an opportunity to talk about what is next for Whole You? What special projects are you working on? Um, are you still teaching at the Adult Learning Center in Cambridge or right. what are your classes? Yeah, so I'm focused right now on the one-on-one -on -one advising mm -hmm. and the workshops at the Boston Center for Adult Education. They've been great. And then also Whole U TV. I've been putting a lot of efforts into that. I'm looking forward to the launch in December. And if you would like to sign up and subscribe to um, that TV segment, please do so. And uh, we're sending that out on a monthly basis. They're totally free, and they're just um, to inspire people to integrate this type of learning, if it interests you, into your personal development plan. Absolutely. And I also want to encourage people uh, to go to Shannon's website. It's Whole You Info. Whole you dot info. Dot info because there's, you have some videos on there as well. I do. That talks about um, what your um, pr process is like and mm -hmm. what the assessment process is like mm -hmm. as well. Right, I would say that you know, if you go to www.wholeu.info and there is a button where you can click and sign up for a free assessment. So there's a complimentary phone assessment. We can talk for 30 minutes and see if and how I can help you. And that is the end of our show. I want to thank my viewing audience. I want to thank my crew, the interns. You guys are fabulous. And I want to thank you guys for, for tuning in. Um, again, please go to www.divinedesignsite.com and uh, get some information that's going to help you with your career management uh, moving forward. Until then, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Yvette.